It took a little while because she assembled our entire pot of pork rib stew, but it has just arrived. This is a bone-in piece. Good morning, everyone. It's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com in South Korea. We have just arrived to the residence, the home, the historical home of Kim Dong Su. And Kim Dong Su built this house and this whole residence in 1784. And he was a rich, a very rich man in the Joseon dynasty back in the 17, late 1700s. And so he built this home. This was his house here in the middle of the countryside. It's a beautiful location. And we're gonna go walk around his historical home. During the winter, Korea gets extremely cold. And so for this house, there are compartments underneath the floor down here where you can build a fire to heat up the floor and the keeping the floor warm is a, a good source of warmth for the entire house. Mm. And this is peeking into the, the rooms. Let's check out this well, see how deep it is. It looks a little bit like a cenote. This is a really cool historical site and it shows really the, the culture and the history and tradition of how rich people lived formerly in Korea. So many rooms to explore, and there are just so many different compartments to this entire home complex, residence complex. Right next door to the mansion, they have rebuilt a traditional, another traditional style home, but it is now home to the, to an academy of dance, traditional Korean dance, and so there's a class going on right now. We're gonna step in to see a traditional dance. Was pretty cool. Their footwork is amazing. Wow. Very nice. Actually, this is not. The Academy has invited us to have tea, a traditional Korean tea. Is there a special way to drink it? Yeah. No, no, no. It's no? Like same? Yeah, same. Okay. It's gone. Yeah, it's green tea. Yeah. It is Korean green tea. The tea is brewed in a little tea pot and then it's poured into a bowl and then from the bowl it is served into our individual cups. This is some tea snacks. This is a sesame. I can use a hand. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, it's kind of crunchy. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, that's like a sesame brittle. Kind of sweet, not too sweet. And then just just like packed sesame seeds. Oh, that's nice and juicy. That was a really nice experience. This place is a whole cultural center preserving Korean traditional culture, tea, art, music, dance, and also I think you can actually come here to stay and learn about Korean culture and then you can also learn about dance and drink tea and eat and just a, a preservation of Korean traditional culture. We are back in the car now driving on our way to Jungup City where we are going to have lunch pretty soon. We 
just pulled up to a local restaurant for lunch and I love these restaurants in Korea that have the, the barrel can tables. Just ordered some pork rib stew. It's a cool local spot and it smells delicious in here. As soon as I walked in, I can smell the aroma of stew. It took a little while because she assembled our entire pot of pork rib stew, but it has just arrived. Chino just served me a bowl. It's served in a communal pot, and then you have your own bowl, so you can grab a bowl, keeping it nice and hot. Let me, oh, all these pork ribs that look so tender. Let me just try the soup first. Mm. Mm. That's wonderful. That is very porky tasting, with ses lots of sesame seeds in there. You can taste the onions in the broth, and you can taste the leek as well. Oh, there's also, um, Sweet potato noodles. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm. And I can also really taste the garlic in there as well. Lots of garlic. Which banchan side dish should I choose next? I gotta go with the green onion. Or no. Is it um turnip leaves? Mm. Or some kind of okay. I think it's like turnip or or daikon leaves. Oh wow. Mm. That's just covered, coated in chili paste. And then has a little bit of a horseradish taste to it. This is a bone in piece. Oh. That's definitely a bone you need to gnaw on to get all that meat off. <laughs> well, well, that is a big piece of kimchi, and you can tell just from looking at it, that color, that it's a pretty, pretty ripened, fermented kimchi. That was a big bite of kimchi. Mm. And then we left all of the noodles in the communal pot. Oh. Oh, I got some, I got some mushrooms stuck in the noodles. Mm. They're really kind of jelly like noodles and they've just soaked up all of that broth. Mm. It's, it's not fall apart tender meat. It's the type of meat you gotta kind of gnaw on, but it's really flavorful. The city of Jangup is famous for its herbal medicinal tea. And so after we finished with lunch, that was delicious. We are taking a walk down the medicinal herbal tea street. This is the sign welcoming you to the herbal tea street in Jangup. And then these are all the different tea shops in the city on the street. You can smell those medicinal herbs just coming up to the tea shop. So we just chose one, come in here, and as soon as I stepped in, I can smell the aroma of all the medicinal herbs. It smells like a clove field. Yeah, banana. <laughs> Korean, it's called Sang Hwa Cha. I love this presentation. Whoa, that is heavy. That's an entire stone cup jar with a lid. Oh, whoa. And inside is 
That's beautiful. I thought it were they were little floating chilies at first, but they're they look like little slices of apple, but they are jujube. And then there's ginkgo. I think that's ginkgo. And the and you kind of stir it all up. There's a a Chinese date, I think. And then also water chestnuts. Oh, that aroma is wonderful. That smells like smells like boiled cherries and and cloves and cinnamon. And you can smell all sorts of like fruity spices in here. First, some of those floating slices of jujube and some of that soup. Mmm. Oh, that's wonderful. That tastes like. <laughs> it kind of tastes a little bit like apple juice, but with a lot of spiced flavor in there. And it has a little bit of a bitterness to it as well from all those things they've boiled in this broth. Mmm. That is both like fruity and medicinal tasting at the same time. Mm, I really like it. It has that medicinal taste to it, but the medicinal taste is not overpowering and it's really nicely balanced out with that jujube sweetness. So it's it's not like a like a really bitter medicine flavor. It's a really really pleasant medicinal flavor. Mmm, like a cider, but like a, a very exciting cider. They also brought us out a plate of bananas. I'm gonna take a bite of banana and then immediately chase it with some of the herbal tea. Mm, with some chestnuts in it. Mmm. That does go well together. I am down just to the the whole jujube. Oh, it's seedless. Oh no. <laughs> I found the seed at the end of my bite. Mm. That's nice and creamy. The date texture, but not as dense. And then mm, it's kind of raisiny in taste. That was fantastic, I really enjoyed it. Many people will drink that tea soup when they feel like they're getting sick because it can really boost your immune system, feeling strong after that. We took a drive to Nejangsan National Park, which is famous for its maple trees. And so right now it's spring, but during autumn, I've heard that this park and this whole area just explodes with population because people come to visit because of the changing of the colors of the maple trees, all of the red and yellow and orange colors of the leaves. Right now, it is pretty green, although there are some of the maple trees that are permanently red. Also within this mountain national park is the Najang Sa Temple. So we're walking down the road to the temple I'm loving these maple trees though. There's so many different shades of green, all the way from neon green, almost a yellow color, to really dark green. Okay. Okay. This is an incredible setting at this temple, surrounded by mountains and swaying lush green maple trees. I would love to visit this national park in the different seasons when you can see the different colors of the maple trees. In winter it's covered in snow, but autumn is the most famous when the mountain is just blanketed in orange and red and yellow colors from the maple trees. We drove back to Junchu and we are at a little hole in the wall kind of restaurant right across from the Junchu University. And this restaurant is called Samchu Chigan. And they specialize in a lot of 
kind of snack foods. We ordered a variety of different snack dishes to all share. This is the kimbap, which is the rice roll. And this is a really nice looking one. It looks like there's ham and egg and maybe imitation crab and some pickled vegetables in there. I'll take one right out of that. And then it's brushed with some oil and some sesame seeds. Look at that cross section. Whoa. I think we got some, some instant noodles. Oh, with a piece of Kraft cheese on top. Kimbap is always a solid choice. It's good, wrapped in seaweed, sesame flavor, and then those, those that rainbow of ingredients in the middle. I'm gonna try a piece of lettuce. This is like a whole mishmash of different fried things called twigim. There's fried noodles, there's fried peppers, there's fried egg. I'm gonna have one of these fried, fried stuffed peppers. Oh. Let me grab that again, and then I will dip it into the sauce. Oh, I want to get one of those leeks as well. And then you put it into your piece of lettuce. Mm. That's a lot of crunchiness. That has all the properties of a snack food. It's crunchy and salty. Wash that down with a piece, a slice of the fish cake tofu. It kind of tastes like kind of like a chewy tofu with a little bit of a fish flavor to it. I'm gonna go with one more lettuce wrap and this time go for the this, the ones that already have sauce. Oh, and this is a noodle wrapper. This one I think is filled with noodle, sweet potato noodles. And then this one already has sauce, so you just eat it as is. It's all of those same fried things, but then coated in a sweet chili paste. For this one, you're supposed to grab some of the some of the noodles with a rice cake and eat it all together in one. Well, that's that's tougher said than done. The noodles are are slippery. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, thanks. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> That kind of tastes like Korean hamburger helper. Or Korean, what is that? Like, um, kind of like macaroni and cheese from the box. That is definitely a Korean snack food. You've got those instant noodles and the chewy rice cake. And then it's all submerged in a sweet chili paste. And then with that an extra piece of cheese on top, and it has a little bit of a leek flavor as well. That is a very, very interesting dish. We just finished with that Korean fast food meal. Those types of dishes are hugely popular, especially with young people in throughout Korea. And I'm not, I'm honestly not a huge fan of the dishes in the red, tangy, sweet sauce. It's a little on the sweet side for me. Uh, but I did really like the deep fried little bites that wrapped in lettuce here. Those are really good. Ying and I just happened to be in Jeonju during, at the beginning or at the start of the Jeonju International Film Festival, which is an annual festival. And so we have been invited to the opening ceremony, which happens tonight. I think this is quite a big international film festival and it has taken place every year. This is gonna be the 17th annual Jeonju Film Festival. It's an outdoor event with a big stage at the front. Okay. All the celebrities, actors, and actresses are now coming out and taking photos and then walking down the red carpet. Our seat is a little bit far away, but we can get a little glimpse. Now, the 17th Jeonju International Film Festival. 
성대 한막을 올리겠습니다. 우리 And I will see you on the next video. Oh, I missed the cheese. I gotta go back for some cheese. Oh, how could I miss that 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 that, that slice of cheese in there? I gotta get some in this first bite.